Hello there, Magnus Mew here, and I am working on a massive animation that is taking way too long to make, but I promise it'll be worth it. In the meantime, however, I have nothing to really show, so I figure I might as well make a little tutorial, hopefully it doesn't take too long to explain everything, on how to make characters grow and inflate and even explode if you're into that. Uh, I've seen a lot of animations on Blender that try to make characters grow, and they don't really look very dynamic when they're getting bigger, it's sad to say. Uh, I think one of the beauties of an animation suite like Blender is that there are a lot of really cool tools that will allow you to make your characters grow in lots of different ways. Um, so I'm going to start with a very simple example using my Dragonite character Mari. And to start, we'll put Mari in the scene. I'm going to click on this cube and then press delete to delete it. File, import FBX because my Mari is an FBX file. Thank God for the models resource. I don't know how to make models. That's not what this tutorial is about. Now you can see the effectively a 3D outline of a Dragonite here. I'm going to go into viewport shading or material preview mode, my apologies, so that you can actually see what she looks like. Whoa, Mari's a Dragonite that loves to inflate herself. She grows by inhaling air, which is, you know, pretty easy to animate all things considered. I'm not going to animate her mouth movements or anything, though. She's just going to be T-posing forever. An unfortunate fate, but, you know, simplicity is key here. We're just trying to show how to make the character get big. All right. So, I'll start the animation at frame zero. I will press I on... Actually, we're going to go into the Dragonite's body itself, just for convenience's sake. Uh, the armature is where these bones are. If you're going to go into pose mode, you will in order to like, you know, have the character walk around and stuff, you're gonna need to have armature visible. But for now, well, actually you, you can still have armature visible and go into pose mode if you go into the overlays tab and to, and uh, hide the bones. Very cool. You can also hide stuff like the axes and the floor. You can hide everything uh, if you just, you know, gray out this whole shift show overlays thing. But I want to enable the floor as a reference point for where I'm already standing for now. All right, so we'll select Dragonite here and I will, by hovering over any of the scale uh, options, hit I to insert a keyframe. Uh, you can see that there's a keyframe here, frame zero. And now Mari is one times as big. That's amazing. Now let's have Mari be, let's say, scale of three. Whoa, she's three times bigger now. We'll click on diamond, diamond, and diamond. And let's hit space to start the animation. Wow, we're really gaming. Okay, let's go into animation and clean this up a bit, shall we? Go into animation. Once again, I want to enter uh, material preview mode here. Now you can see here, we got Dragonite, we got our object transforms, you know, X, Y, and Z scale. You can actually select uh, just one keyframe at a time to move it. So if you move the X keyframe to 100, now Mario will only be three times as wide at frame 100, and Blender will automatically interpolate such that Mari is between one and three, depending on how far in the animation she is. So now she's uh, at a scale of two for her X value because she's halfway between the one and the three keyframe. But once again, this isn't exactly what we want, is it? We don't just want her to just grow in a straight line or even anything close to it. We want her to inflate like a balloon. And in this case, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go interpolation type, we're gonna go back, and now watch this. It's not gonna be great, but whoa, she rapidly swells and then, you know, bounces back a little bit to more normal size. Seems pretty cool. Now, I want her to inflate and then go back a little bit and then stay at that size for a little bit and then inflate again and so on. So we're going to click on any of these top keyframes to select every keyframe in that area instead of just selecting one. Theoretically, you could go, you could click on this top one. Whoops, I accidentally transformed it. You could click with this top one and then shift click and shift click again, and I've selected everything, but it's easier to select them all at once. So we go here, we right click, we duplicate, and let's go to frame 55. All right, and now at frame 50, there's a keyframe for three. 
and at 55 there's a keyframe for three. I'm just gonna call these meters, let's just say she goes from one meter to tall to three meters tall, just for the sake of simplicity here. All right, all right. Now, theoretically speaking, if I want her to inflate over the same interval again, I could go from 55 to 105, and then add in a keyframe and be like, oh, now she's five meters tall, and then click on the diamonds or hit the I key, and then I could go in here and make sure that this keyframe is interpolated with the back modifier. So now, oh wow, she grows twice. That's amazing. But what if I wanted to do that several times over? It's more convenient to just have this growth repeat itself, isn't it? We can do exactly that. Let's go into the graph editor, click this top thing here, click the graph editor, and now we can select X scale. And you can see here a little graph here. That's why it's called the graph editor. At frame zero, size is one meter. By frame 50, size is three meters. You can see the whole arc too with her uh, over inflating a little bit to, I guess it's the apex is 3.2 meters here at frame 29. And then she goes back to three. All right, so we got X scale. You have the keyframes from zero to 55. We go to all the modifiers here. And then here's the key, we're gonna add curves. I'm sorry, not curves, cycles. Now the default uh, setting for cycles is that uh, both before and after the motion is repeated indefinitely. Meaning that at frame zero, Mari is, uh, one meter wide, and then at frame 50, she's three meters wide, and then at frame, at frame 55, she's three meters wide because once again, there's a keyframe at frame 55. At frame 56, however, the animation resets. So now she's a little more than one meter wide because, you know, the original keyframe where she was one meter wide was, it overlaps with 56. So it's taking the first frame, not the first frame, the, the second frame, technically, of the animation. So frame one here, and then you can see she's 1.183 meters wide. And now at frame 56, she's 1.183 meters wide. At frame 111, she's also 1.183 meters wide and so on. But we want her to grow, you know, more and more every time. Just for simplicity's sake, before, we'll set the before mode to no cycles. She stays at one. And then after mode will be repeat with offset. So now every 50 frames, she inflates by two meters. So she will go from one to three, all the way up to five, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously this modifier is only being active for the X value. So we will copy this modifier and then select the Y scale and paste and select the Z scale and paste. And now, as you can see, she will steadily grow from one to three to five. Now, I don't know if there's a way to say have her have something change exponentially for instance if i wanted to go from one to three to nine which is three times three and then to 27 i don't know how to do that if anyone does not do that please say so in the comments i'm not an expert on this just sharing what little i know okay okay very cool and you know you can see you've got a little bit of growth here very cool boom boom and then she stays a little bit before getting bigger because you know why the heck not it's fun all right, now then, I said I would make the character inflate. It's not really inflating. Obviously, I'm not gonna animate her like inhaling and having her belly stretch out and stuff. Uh, I could make a tutorial on that, but that's relatively simple. What we wanna do is have her inflate. Luckily, there's a inflate tool that literally just lets us do that. It's in the mesh filter here. So we go to sculpting, scroll down until you see this mesh filter. Inflate is actually the default one, funny enough. Uh, so that's cool. Going into material preview because we want to see what she looks like. And then we can just inflate. We scroll to the right. We can change the value down here. Whoa, da, da, da. I think the general maximum is 10. Let's go to five here. And wow, now she's inflated. Um, but what if I want her to inflate over time? I don't want her to start all puffed up. So let's, uh, yeah, undo history. We have taken out the filter mesh. Go to sculpt mode and we're gonna do something a little quirky here we're gonna use these things called shape keys we're going to start by hitting plus here to make a basis and then we will hit plus again 
to make key one. And you see how there's value uh, of zero and range minimum is zero, range max is one. I'll just set this value to one really quick. If you set the value to zero, you're not gonna see anything at first. And now I inflate. We'll just set strength to five. Very cool. If I had set the value to zero, you don't see anything. It's like she's not inflated at all. But as I slide this number between zero and one, she gets a little more puffy, which is what we want. Very cool. What if I want her to be even puffier than she is right now though? Well, we can change the max to three. And now you notice that this value meter goes between zero and three. Now she's a little too puffed up, some would say, or just right. <laughs> All right, for now we'll set her to zero. We'll set the frame back to zero. Now I could do a similar thing where I have the shape keys and I insert a keyframe and then I insert another keyframe here and so on and so forth and I try to tweak it, but there is a slightly easier way. Instead of making a whole new set of keyframes for this, I'm gonna right click value. I'm going to insert, I, I'm sorry, I don't wanna insert keyframe. I want to add a driver and then I'm going to tie the inflation value. Like, you know, it's the shape key value, but I'm gonna, I'm going to tie the shape key value to the size value. So edit driver, uh, the variable, we'll just call the variable size. And then the expression will be size, whatever. And the object will be Dragonite. The type will be the X scale. Uh, transform space, because the value of the Dragonite is one. Isn't that, isn't that a surprise, Lamau? Uh, however, there's a problem now. If we just have the uh, shape key value, let's call this the inflation value. It's a good idea to name your stuff. I don't really name my. Uh, I don't really name anything, that's a problem of mine. If you just map inflation to size directly, she's already inflated. That's not what we want. That's not, and then she maxes out at times three? Like, what are we doing? At the one at, she, trust me, Mari has greater air capacity than that. So, we're gonna do a little math. We're gonna go edit driver. We're gonna go size minus one. And you can see the driver value is gonna go from one to zero. Because Mari's size is one, her inflation value is gonna be zero. Pretty simple stuff. Now, Mari's still gonna top out pretty easily, unfortunately, or fortunately, I suppose, depending on who you ask. Note that Mari's size value is going like up to freaking like 11 and so on and so forth. So, we're going to change the size value. Note that you can click within the driver uh, value and then go size minus Minus one, we're gonna have parentheses around this. Divided by, we'll say five. That'll probably do. Now you can see that when Mari's at size, size one, her inflation value is zero. When she's at size three, her inflation value is uh, 0 0.4 because size minus one, so three minus one is two. Divide that by five is 0 0.4 and so on and so forth. Very cool. Now let's view this animation again. View her just growing in eternity. We and now she's getting bigger and she's getting a little puffier. Oh yeah, love to see that. Very cool. What if I wanted her to inflate a little bit more as things went on though? Well, I could use exponents, uh, but I'm a little too lazy for that right now. I don't feel like doing complex math. Uh, this video is already long enough as it is. Uh, the last thing that I do want to show is uh, explosions, because some people are into that. And I wanna show that off, because it's a little tough to rein in, but once you know what to do, you should be able to make your critters burst however you want. All right, so let's say that I want her to explode around At around the 300 frame mark. It's a pretty big balloon right here. Just about ready to uh, to pop, so to speak. So, selecting Dragonite here, we're going to go to Object, we're going to go to Quick Effects and Quick Explode. There are more complicated ways to make this happen, but for now we will Quick Explode because, yeah.
All right, now, you'll notice a few things. First of all, uh, the particles just kind of exist in one place, and then they just vanish after frame 350. We can change that. If I want to, obviously my animation happens to end at frame 350, but we can change the lifetime to say 100, and now those particles will last for 100 frames. Very cool. Frame start obviously is when the Mario will go from existing to not. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Where is velocity? Here it is. Uh, object velocity, I believe, is what I'm looking for here. If I change that to 100, yeah, you can see that the pieces are moving more horizontally than before, which, you know, gives more of that feeling of explosion. Now, something that you may have noticed is uh, that the textures are a little wonky, even before exploding. I had to retake this video a couple times because I couldn't for the life of me figure out how this worked, but I looked up some stuff online, and you have to go to modifiers now. Quick Explode adds some particle stuff and some modifier stuff. If you go to this Explode modifier here, you disable cut edges, and now she looks as good as new, until she inevitably dies. Um, now the problem with this is that your velocity also goes kind of crazy. So we're going to change that velocity down. Just change it down until it doesn't, you know, go all over the place. Change it a bit higher. Can we go up to 50? We could probably go up to 50. Yeah, it's about good enough. All right. So, once again, we've got Mari getting bigger and inflating and bursting. Thank you very much for watching. I will uh, export this animation at the end of this video because you've earned it. You, you sat through a tutorial. Congratulations on having an attention span, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do more of these, but I figure, you know... It might be something you'll want to see, just to know how to do stuff or just to watch the process. Yeah, <laughs> Lamal.